Hey everyone, welcome to Frank Repair Bench. And here we have a Commodore 64 board, which is uh, uh, one of the two C64 boards that uh, my friend Tony sent to me to be repaired. Uh, this is a nice board from 1983 and uh, it's uh, assembly number 250407 and it has uh, nice uh, ROMs uh, with uh, red labels that's my the first time I've, I see uh, red uh, labels on the on the C64 ROMs and this one has a, a black screen so let's try to understand what's wrong okay this board has uh, most of the principal chips uh, socketed so the first thing I will do as you have seen uh, my other repair videos I will check uh, clock uh, on the CPU and check the ROMs uh, on a programmer and so on. Uh, but as I always do, the first thing on a C64 before troubleshooting, I remove the seed uh, because it's uh, um, not very common chip anymore. And uh, if it's good. Uh, uh, I will salvage uh, the, the, the chip um, many power cycles and remove the seed in this case bring the system to boot uh, and it seems okay so probably the original seed on this board had uh, data bus uh, uh, problem or conflict or short or whatever and it didn't allow the CPU to access everything else so I will transplant uh, one of my seed and uh, run a test program now okay the test is uh, running and uh, as you can see it looks okay and you may have seen uh, the kernel fail uh, which is uh, um, not a real uh, failure on this uh, on this board and I'll show you why uh, that's because the kernel on this machine is uh, I don't know if you can see it's the central ROM this one is 912 2702 um, which is an early uh, kernel it's not uh, the last uh, as we found in many Commodore 64 which is the 03 so this is an early kernel ROM which is uh, slightly different from uh, um, the one that this program knows so that's why the fail but uh, that image is correct, I verified it and also works, the sound works with uh, my seed so this one uh, is okay with uh, minor uh, uh, troubleshooting, let's see the next uh, board okay here is the second uh, board which is uh, very similar to the other one It's. Uh, 250407 also but uh, it's revision B and uh, it has almost everything uh, that uh, we don't like when repairing uh, C64 uh, no sockets uh, of course uh, but for the seed uh, MT RAM which is unreliable lot of MOS technology logic which is unreliable here is another one and uh, let's see hmm. 
random pattern, uh, random noise or everything. Well, let's see. As always, the first checks, uh, uh, like on the other videos, has been uh, inside uh, this uh, box, uh, this metallic uh, box. There is the VIX-7 and the clock generation circuit. So I checked the, the input clocks on pin 21 and 22 and they are okay. Uh, then the output clock, uh, which is uh, about uh, 1 MHz, uh, slightly less because this is a PAL uh, C64 on pin 17 and the same signal on pin 39 of the CPU. Reset signal pin 40 and everything looks uh, good so far so let's move around the first thing uh, to check uh, is always uh, the PLA and I have a little uh, uh, note on what I should I find uh, on each pin in a normal working C64 and uh, all looks almost good uh, but this signal which is not a uh, valid uh, logic level, it's not uh, high enough or low enough and uh, this is the I.O. signal let's look on the schematic on the schematic the I.O. signal pin 12 goes only to U15 on pin 1 transplanted the PLA from uh, the other board here it is and we have a blue screen and the level is okay so there must be something else bad on this uh, c64 um, no amount of troubleshooting uh, has produced any result oscilloscope uh, traces uh, um, hot, uh, no hot chips, uh, no piggybacking uh, of every RAM uh, did uh, anything. So I first uh, excluded uh, the CPU by socketing and testing the CPU separately. I excluded the ROMs, so I socketed also the ROMs and socketed a few other chips that uh, could be suspicious but nothing, uh, no results at all. So I decided to burn into a, um, an EEPROM, uh, a diagnostic program, which is called the dead test, C64 dead test, that is supposed to make some uh, tests on, uh, and uh, it should work with only CPU, PLA and the big chip. So, all the rest could be uh, bad and uh, should uh, uh, visualize something uh, or flash in the screen. What I have is the screen, which should be mostly spaces and some uh, informations. And based on the characters uh, on the screen, uh, um, it seems really a RAM problem, but it doesn't flash indicating. Uh, what uh, the chip may be, so I have to understand uh, from the wrong character what bit of memory is bad. Okay, let's uh, learn when uh, everything uh, looks bad and no clue, just use this fine program. Uh, based on the character on the screen, it was uh, U10, the bit number 3. So I changed that uh, RAM chip and uh, everything else looks fine, I guess. Well, we'll see. This test uh, takes uh, quite some time to run, so we'll see what happens after uh, all the tests complete. 
Okay, I think this one uh, is mostly okay now. I put back uh, the seed so the test uh, can uh, test uh, for, for the sound output. And so lesson is when everything uh, looks good, uh, it's probably uh, a RAM chip. And the first socket to place in this case is, uh, should be on the kernel ROM to use this uh, nice uh, uh, diagnostic test or make a cartridge uh, with uh, this test and use the cartridge so you don't need uh, the socket uh, on the kernel ROM yeah it works it seems all okay um, I will try with the original kernel ROM and uh, loading uh, some games from uh, the disk and play a bit with this uh, C64 before declaring it good loading from disks uh, and uh, memory and uh, everything uh, seems to work also tested the joystick port but I will uh, uh, keep this one under test uh, um, for some time more because uh, I socketed uh, too many innocent things <laughs> well lesson here is um, that the empty RAM is uh, unreliable uh, and we already know that uh, but the best way to find uh, a RAM problem is uh, to use uh, the diagnostic uh, kernel as I did but I did uh, too late uh, after I ex excluded uh, everything else so when uh, you find a board with this kind of RAM uh, probably the best thing to do is uh, if it's dead or almost and uh, PLA is good of course um, just uh, use the cartridge or uh, make a, a kernel uh, adapter like I did and try that program that me that would have saved the, all these sockets uh, and uh, a lot of time anyway uh, two out of two boards uh, are now working thank you for watching